Hello and welcome back to the channel. Big thanks for clicking on the video. Tonight we're doing a little local camp um, because of the cost of fuel and also, also a school night as well. So I can't stray too far from home. But a really exciting camp because I'm going to be using a new tent, but not a new tent in that sense. I picked it up off Facebook for £20 and it's a bit of a vintage tent and it's not something I'd heard of before, but doing a bit of research turns out to be a bit of a legend in the uh, in the camping world. So I'm really excited that I might have got myself the best bargain I've ever found. So first time pitching it, first time sleeping in it. So really excited to have a look around it. So in honor of the, uh, the 20 pound tent, I've got all my budget backpacking gear with me today. So coming in around the 85 pound mark for all the gear I'm using tonight. So it's gonna form part of a, a series I'm gonna do now on, um, on wild camping loadouts for less than 100 pounds. So this is my second one. I've got a third one coming up soon as well. Um, so just showing what's possible for, for less than 100 pounds when you can find some bargains. So we're really excited by that. Huge thanks to everyone who's been subscribing lately. Uh, channel's grown really well. Um, so I'm trying to put out two videos a week and uh, keep the content uh, interesting. But if there's anything you want, just let me know. If you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button now. And while you're at it, give this video a like. I'm gonna potter on through these beautiful fields to a uh, what I hope is gonna be a, a quiet camping spot. So I'll catch up with you in a bit. Yeah, central beacons, just got a slight covering in cloud to the right hand side there. But uh, still looking nice and impressive. So I'm a real advocate for hill walking. It's not all about the mountains. And this is why the views you can get from your local hills are and can be absolutely stunning. So you haven't got to go up an official mountain to get beautiful views especially living in the South Wales Valleys. One of my favorite spots to come, it's just really beautiful up here. Oh, it really is an absolutely stunning evening. A lot of heavy rain last night. It's been pretty gray and wet all day. Cleared out late this afternoon, so it's got that kind of, that fresh smell and that fresh clarity of, of very minimal haze and all the colors are really bright. The, Greens are really sharp and contrasty. So it's a really lovely evening to be out. Like other people have said sometimes, it's hard to find the motivation to come out, particularly on a, on a work night. Um, especially if you're going local and you're a little bit worried about how peaceful it's going to be, even though I've, I've been here quite a few times and never, never spent the night, but I know it's a quiet hill. But, uh, Glad I got motivated to come out because nine times out of 10, you always enjoy yourself once you're out. It's just uh, sometimes getting out outside is, is difficult. So the tent I'm really excited to use is been around since the seventies. The company that made it is uh, formerly ceased trading in 2012. So it is an old tent in design, but it was a tent that was light years ahead of its competitors when it was launched. And that's part of the fascination with the story of it, just how innovative this tent was. 
and the maker of it, how much they changed all of the tents and how much we take for granted now all the innovations that this man came up with. So it is a really interesting story which we're, we're going to be telling in a, in a different video. We won't go into the full details tonight. We'll have a look around the tent and uh, obviously do that. But in a separate video, we'll do a, a full proper look around at the tent and a bit of a talk about the story of it. So here we are. This is the tent I've been really excited to pitch. It's a Robert Saunders Space Packer Mark I. So it's supposed to be a really good tent, light years ahead of its time. It was still made right up until the end in 2012. Uh, still came highly recommended was on sale for £269 when it was uh, when it was last for sale. So £20, looks in really good nick. I've not pitched it yet, um, so I'm hoping that the space I've found here, which is quite a nice little spot, it's quite well hidden, um, hopefully it's going to be big enough to pitch this tent. So I've never pitched it before, so this could take forever, so I'm just going to film it and then maybe speed up by like 10,000 times to uh, to make it look like I've done it okay. So let's, uh, yeah, let's just get out and have a look. <laughs> that's the outer pitch so it is an outer pitch first tent it seems to have doors everywhere so it's got doors at each end um, and then the inner sort of goes up along the I'm not even sure which direction it goes in to be honest I think it might go that way um, but there's just enough room to pitch it here so it's got a sturdy aluminium pole hasn't got enough pegs to actually peg it all out so uh, I've bought some different pegs which I can I can go out with and stuff because I didn't know if there was enough pegs in the bag and there definitely isn't. Um, and they are they are really cheap, um, just metal pegs as well, like little steel ones. So um, definitely worth worth upgrading. Um, but yeah, so there's more going out points, but we'll have a look at uh, getting the inner up and <laughs> seeing how that works. So you can see from the zips, you can actually unzip them in all sorts of different ways. So you can kind of take the whole end off if you want to, or sort of go in from one side. So it's um, it's really flexible. So there's a tension band that runs the length of the pole. And you can see it's really quite spacious inside. Um, you can see there's two zip doors at the other end as well, and you can see obviously a tie-off point, so you can completely open this tent up really. It's, uh, it's a really flexible design. And even without any of the uh, going out points done you can see it's pretty sturdy looking tent it was rated as being suitable for mountaineering and stuff so apparently it uh, sheds wind really well and is really robust and it's got a uh, ripstop nylon outer only weighs 1.9 kilograms it's sort of a one and a half person tent i think you could probably squeeze two in if you really wanted to um but i think it's better for one but um let's get the inner up and the inner is going to be interesting because uh it is part cotton. Okay, so it's certainly a really interesting tent to pitch. The inner, I think it's going to take a little bit of work to get used to. It's a very different design to uh, anything I've ever put up before. So that's looking into the inside now, and you can see on one side you've got a kind of a light brown cotton. On the other side you've got a lightweight white nylon. And it's a sort of T-junction zip there, which both panels open up. So you're looking through one end where I've opened up and tied back both the panels through the other end when they're not. So the bathtub is a bit of a mess. So you can see that it's supposed to sort of be brought taut by these corner things. So I think I need to go around and adjust those and tighten those up. And they go to, to an outer peg. So I think if you get those reasonably tightly adjusted, then that will help sort out the bathtub. But there's also, if you look down here, there's also another thing there, which could do with being pegged out as well, really. But I don't have enough pegs and I don't know, doesn't make a huge amount of sense that that needs another peg really. 
Um, but I can't find any instructions as to how to pitch this tent online or anything like that. So just kind of having to sort of um, try and work it out as we go along. So it's a nice little hidden spot to, uh, to pitch a tent. And it's a, it's a smart looking tent. I think you can definitely handle some weather as the, uh, as the manufacturer claimed. So here's the other side of the tent with the, uh, the door zipped up. And we can still see these sort of issues with the corners not sitting quite right. Each zip is able to be opened from the top as well. So it's really flexible in terms of how you can open up and let air through the tent. So the inner zips also zip from the bottom or from the top as well. So the one thing that's definitely missing from the tent are um, mesh sheets on the inner doors. So they can either be closed or open. There's no, um, there's no bug sheets on the inside. So that, uh, that's one mark against this tent. So as I said on, on the walk up, this is part of my budget wild camping series. So all the equipment you see me using tonight in terms of the tent, the backpack, the sleeping bag, the sleeping mat and the pillow are all purchased for under hundred pounds. So I'm gonna really go through that quickly now just to show you what I've got, because I'm gonna be doing this a few times with some slightly different setups, showing what it is possible and, and that it's not a complete fluke to get a decent tent for less than uh, 30 quid. So we've got an OEX Valo 7080 backpack. I bought this off of Facebook Marketplace in mint condition. It's got its original rain cover. There's no damage to any of the zips. There's no damage to any of the things. There's not even a mark on it. And this cost me 20 quid. Really good bag, really big bag. That's only 2.1 kilos as well, which is quite light, really, considering the, uh, the size of the bag. So yeah, really good backpack. Will probably last many years, 20 pounds. Now, we've also got in the bottom here, close one side, we've got my high gear luxury pillow from Go Outdoors, and that was brandy, and that was eight quid. So you can't go wrong for eight quid. We've got an OEX Evolution EV200 sleeping bag. It's a two season bag, weighs 800 grams, packs down pretty small, um, and it's got a comfort limit of around seven degrees. Should be around 10 degrees tonight, so this should be enough. Um, yeah, 28 pounds, that was brand new from Go Outdoors. Um, it's normally slightly more expensive than that, but they've often got sales on, um, and you can also pick them up in blacks as well, and blacks often do sales at different times to go outdoors, so well worth checking both for 28 pounds for a brand new sleeping bag. And I really like this sleeping bag as well. It's, um, it's really smart. We'll just get it out now just to show you that it, uh, it does look like a pretty decent bag. You'll find OEX stuff sometimes has mixed reviews. Maybe the quality control is not the best, but, um, but so far the sleeping bag's been absolutely fine for me. So it's a synthetic fill bag. Feels really nice, nice and soft. Fluffs up pretty well and it's a pretty decent size. So for 28 pounds, I don't think you can go wrong, but just bear in mind, obviously it is a two season bag. So you're not gonna be going out in the depths of winter in it. So the last thing here is a mountain warehouse compact inflated mat. So it weighs in at 530 grams, it's pretty big and it's a sort of honeycomb shape. Um, but I've not used this yet. Um, I've inflated it for my daughter when we did that uh, coastal wild camp, so she slept on it. But I've not slept on it yet, but for this was 12 pounds, brand new from Facebook Marketplace, never been used to the tags on. Retails for apparently 59.99 according to Mountain Warehouse, but that's the sort of shop that always has a permanent sale on, so they've got like a retail price on, but you never pay that. So I think more realistic, I think it's on about 29.99 or maybe 39.99. Um, but yeah, 12 pound, absolute bargain. So you do see things like this crop up on Facebook and Gumtree a few times. So that's that. And obviously my tent. <laughs> the Robert Saunders Space Packer Mark One. Absolutely beautiful tent. Um, Really looking forward to using it. I think it's a really strong tank and definitely takes some weather, weighs in at 1.9 kilos. At a push, you could get two people in there, but really spacious and comfy for one. So for 1.9 kilos, looking at the quality of it and the strength and all the rest of it, that is an absolute bargain. That is a tent to go anywhere with you. Um, so 20 pounds, um, just goes to show, now I've now got two really high quality tents for less than 
30 quid. So my Bango Summit that's 25 pounds and this now for 20 pounds. So I've got two amazingly good tents um, to use my less than 100 pound setups. So I'll pop on screen how much this setup's cost me tonight. And um, yeah, I'm gonna get set up and, uh, and have a cider. And uh, yeah, we'll catch up once that's done. What an absolutely stunning evening for it. And those views from uh, my local hill, wow. Just, what a place. There we are. All set up. And no, you're not gonna wanna use this as a two person tent unless you're uh, very close to them. But there's plenty of room for one person, absolutely tons of space. Nice backpack area. Loads of space at the front here. No internal pockets and nowhere to hang a lamp either. So, um, loses marks for that. I suspect bugs are gonna get through at the two zip points as well, because there's a small hole there. So, uh, I'm not a fan of bugs, so I'm not looking forward to that. Well, it's been an absolutely beautiful evening. Really glad I came out. Um, just goes to show that you don't have to go a million miles to have a beautiful evening out in the countryside. I appreciate, I'm lucky living in South Wales that this is on my doorstep. Um, so yeah, I do appreciate that. But yeah, it's an absolutely beautiful evening. Really peaceful and still. Some lovely clouds around. Always a little bit better when you've got some clouds in the sky, not just a completely blue sky. Gonna have a, a cider to celebrate being almost at 500 subscribers, which is absolutely amazing. Um, <laughs> appreciate every single one of you. Yeah, it's been quite a, uh, quite a few weeks. Inches meat and apple cider, absolutely delicious stuff. If anyone's a cider fan, let me know in the comments what ciders you like. This stuff's absolutely delicious. Highly recommended. I'm from Devon originally, so, uh, you know, cider is the sort of thing I should be drinking. I spent <laughs> quite a while this evening trying to record a second video about this tent, which I sort of mentioned earlier, uh, telling you a bit about the history of the, of the make and all the rest of it. So hoping I've got, I've got enough footage to make something out of that. Um, but because I'd done a bit of research, I'd kind of, you know, had a, a printout of, of the stuff I'd found and um, trying to do scripted stuff to, to camera is so difficult. I don't know if anyone else who makes YouTube videos does a lot of that, but as soon as you, tr you try to remember what you're saying, even if it's only a couple of lines, it's so, so difficult, such a difficult skill. You know, hats off to, to people who act and stuff and got to remember loads of lines, because I don't know how they do that. Whereas, like now, <laughs> I can just ramble at the camera for ages, uh, making absolutely no sense, repeating the same things all the time. But, um, you know, that's, that's part of what these sort of vlogs blogs are all about, I guess. Yeah, what a great view. One of the cool things about this tent is that you can just pretty much open the, the whole thing up and just sort of peel the layers back. So I think whichever way there was a view in this tent, you can just open up and, and get that view because it, it's such a flexibly designed tent. Massive storage space in these porches as well. So I think you could safely cook in here because there's a really decent height and because you can unzip from the top as well. Um, you can uh, let some stuff out without getting too wet inside the tent, you know, just let some heat and, and all the rest of it and, and steam out to avoid too much con condensation. But it's gonna be really interesting sleeping here tonight. Um, it's not the flattest pitch, so I think that exacerbates any of the problems I've had with the inner sheet. Um, I'm definitely gonna invest in some, some more pegs for the tent or maybe just pack um, pegs from a different tent with it as well. So I can try and peg out the, the inner as well and see if that makes a difference. It, it should do. It just seems odd that you need to peg out the inner as well. It just seems to have so, so many points at which it can be pegged out and attached. Um, you could carry hundreds of pegs and, to, and probably use them all on this, on this tent. But I think I'll definitely take it out in some, in some bad weather. Interestingly, the seams aren't sealed on this tent. So I read somewhere that um, Bob Saunders, who, who manufactured and designed these tents, didn't believe in seam sealing nylon for one, one reason. 
to apply the seams, uh, the sealant on the seams, you need to apply heat, which does degrade the nylon and makes it not last as long. So he didn't uh, like it for that reason. And the second reason was he firmly believed that if the tent is designed properly, you don't need to seal the seams. And um, you know, if the water seeps through, it should just pour down the inside of that seam and then drop out of the bottom of the fly sheet. So not actually get any ingress into the tent. So he said it's all about design and also the way you stitch and fold materials as well. You can also do that so that when it starts to absorb a bit of water, actually kind of seals itself anyway. So it'd be interesting to take this out in some really heavy rain and, and see if that uh, still holds true today. Um, and of course you could get some seam sealing and, and seal them anyway. Um, I'm not sure if that kind of, uh, the seam sealing you get now, I'm not sure if that was available when he was making these tents. Um, but it's interesting if he has designed a way where you don't need to, to, seal, to seal them. So anyway, I'm gonna stop rambling on now because it's probably gonna be a really long video of just me talking to camera, which is, which I'm sure is pretty tedious for everybody. Um, so I'm gonna enjoy a cider now. I'm gonna um, check on my YouTube, see if there's any, any comments to respond to and stuff. And uh, text my good lady and see how she is as well. See if the baby's nicely asleep in bed. And then yeah, try and get early night. I've bought a book to read, but uh, there's nowhere to la hang my lantern, so I'm not sure if it's going to be very practical to try and read tonight. But yeah, lovely evening. Really glad I came out, and hopefully it'll be a half decent video in order to at least try to capture some of the scenes from up here. And I've given you a little bit of a look around the tent that perhaps you've not seen before, not heard about. Uh, and definitely, obviously, watch the other video I've made, which tells you a bit about the history of, of Robert Saunders and the, and the company and just how much innovation went into these tents and how much, whenever you're camping, you know, your tent would have had bits and pieces of design that were taken from this, this one man's ideas. So, raise a glass to him. The tent is absolutely dripping with a uh, really heavy dew this morning because of a complete lack of breeze last night. But it's really nice having the, uh, the two doors so I could open up this side of the tent and um, look out on the sunrise. And obviously you could open up this entire side of the tent from inside with the dual zips. So a really cool little tent. Yeah, it was, a, it was a good night in the tent, slept really well. One small issue is that it doesn't quite seem to be long enough. I'm 5'11", so whilst I fit in the tent fine, I had a little bit of damp on the bottom of my sleeping bag from where it was kicking the, uh, the inner against the outer and uh, bringing the condensation through. And the same at the head end as well. The top of my sleeping bag and my head was occasionally touched in the, uh, the inner fly, the inner 
sheet against the fly sheet and let some water through. So maybe you could sleep at a diagonal in it if you rearrange your bag and stuff. But no, I slept really well actually, which is just as well because I've got to <laughs> get packed away as quick as I can, get back to the car, get home, have a shower and go to work. Which is a real shame because it is absolutely beautiful today and the mist in the valleys is, is really nice as well. Um, but yeah, I'm glad I bought my, <laughs> my boots because it is absolutely soaking. So I'm going to get the tent dried up and uh, packed away and try and get out of here as quick as I can. Leave no traces ever. Quite a nice little pitch actually, pretty well hidden from, uh, from view from most areas as well. And there's the sun. And the misty valley. It's a really great morning for it. But as so often is the case in the UK, dark clouds on the way already. And all the way up to the central Brecon beacons with Panivan and Gondi and Crib Invisible. Well, I'm heading back to the car now. So if you've made it this far, many thanks. I hope you enjoyed seeing uh, another sub 100 pound setup. And um, so obviously a couple of things have changed since my first 100 pound setup. Different backpack, five pound cheaper than the original one. Different tent, five pound cheaper than the original one. A different sleep mat, which was a pound difference, but a huge difference in terms of comfort because it's a proper air mat rather than a um, just a really thin sort of multi mat thing. So I've managed to save money and I think improve the overall setup. So I've got two options now. Well, I've got three options now for for our sub 100 camps in terms of tents. Obviously, got the original Van Gogh Summit. I've now got the Saunders Space Packer Mark 1 and I've also got the 999 Little Tent which I'll be taking out very soon. And uh, I've still got my eye on a couple of things which will hopefully give me some different options for sub £100 as well, including a really cheap sleeping bag I'm hopefully picking up this week. So yeah, if you enjoy this kind of budget camping, drop the video a like, hit subscribe and uh, join me for more adventures. So I'm in a bit of a hurry now because I've got to get home and shower and get to work. So I will leave it there and I will catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.